Namaste Capricorn and Capricorn Risings and welcome to my new Megascope. This is a one month scope dedicated to getting deep on you. I'm Christopher Oteki, your magic mystic and soul biographer, here to help you step into your magic and write your personal story. These new Megascopes are designed to help you mega manifest, in other words really get the most for your buck and they're focused on one month at a time. So my free weeklies are called the Super Scopes, the monthlies are the Megascopes, and the yearlies are the gigascopes. And so from those, I think I got you covered in a giga way. So this is gonna cover actually your birthday period, which of course begins right before Christmas and ends after New Year's. You are the one that has to kind of endure uh, three holidays in one, New Year's, Christmas, and birthday, right? Uh, or whatever your holiday is, Kwanzaa, or whatever, you know, Hanukkah, those all count too, so it doesn't really matter. But what the point is is that sharing your birthday, it's kind of interesting because uh, you know, the rest of the year, Capricorns really don't share at all. Capricorns are really about getting what their heart wants and always getting what their heart wants. But where Capricorns have gotten hurt or lost along the way is in just getting what they want, but forgetting to include what their heart wants. So Capricorns get really good at getting what they want. Capricorn Risings get really good at getting what they want. But if they get good at what they want, getting what they want and it's not their heart, this is where you can go dark or be unhappy or discover that you're in a bad place. So let's take a look at what's going on, shall we? Uh, this is our new uh, Castle One environment, and we are covering, oops, excuse me, Capricorn. So um, for the Capricorn rising signs, this year is a release of the new personality. You're gonna release a new Capricorn personality if you have a Capricorn rising, and this new personality is technically just a personality. It's not the whole you. That's why you can release it right away, because you can fake it till you make it. So Capricorn risings are gonna go ahead and release the Capricorn you know, 2.0, or we should say version 10. Because really, with Pluto, you go up like 10 versions. You don't go up one. Saturn's usually one version. So you're gonna go up a full 10 version. So this year is the year of to release the new personality and beta test new personality. Now for the sun sign of Capricorn, you guys will have to delete your old personality. So you're gonna have to discover parts of yourself still that you don't wanna keep and let it go. This process has already been going on, but we're talking about your ego here. So we're talking about the part of you that acts out or speaks up. The part of you that will speak up or won't speak up. The part of you that you know uh, tends to not speak up when they should speak up, right? All these parts. So this is your ego. It starts with your ego personality and your defenses. It moves to the way you act or don't act and at the top, of it is your charisma, your ability to create a personality, be able to have a personality that lives on its own. This is the area that you're going to make new decisions. And because Capricorns are very decisive people, I want to say it's not your decision making that's so much the issue, it's the decision of how you act on it or don't act on it or the decision of what you act on. Okay, so you can decide that you always want to be a good person, but if you don't act on helping the old lady across the street, are you a good person? You know, these are the questions. You have to act on it and make it so, or you have to not act on it. So, for instance, if you decide you're going to be a good person and you already have enough money and you are uh, forcing someone to pay you back who's, who's poor, see, now that is a situation where your heart is not making that decision. What is? Not your own abundance. You have plenty of money. Not your own situation. Not your heart. So what's, what is that? That's your ego. Your ego is saying, I'm not going to show mercy. I'm not going to act. For no reason at all. Why? Just because you want to enforce your power? This is where Capricorn can go very wrong, where they can end up enforcing their power to be in control and not for the right reasons. The right reasons are your heart told you to do it. When your heart tells you to do it, it's sanctioned by God universe. If your ego or something else told you to do it, even if your defenses told you to do it or your eye protect told you to do it, if it didn't come from the heart, it may be evil or go against life, L-I-V-E, go against living. All right, so the Pluto and Capricorn is the end of evil on Earth because it's forcing people who make cold decisions, like people who run corporations, people who run uh, armies, people who decide to go to war because they want something from greed, people who make decisions not based on the heart are going to have a very hard time starting in 2014. Capricorns that make decisions not based on the heart will have a very hard time in 2014. 
And Capricorn risings that don't make decisions based on the heart will have a lot of egg on their face and a lot of humiliation. But because your sun sign is a different sun sign, you may or may not find yourself in a Mel uh, Gibson perspective or a Tiger Woods perspective where he got caught with like, you know, 20 lovers. That was Capricorn just going, going, going without asking the heart before, you know, Tiger Woods didn't ask the heart before he decided to do that. You know, it's so simple. Uh, Mel Gibson, you know, when he got pulled over, he's just a Capricorn. These Capricorns that came, started flaring up and Pluto went into Capricorn. But when Mel Gibson got pulled over and he called that, uh, you know, when he said that derogatory term to a cop, did he ask his heart before he spoke? No. Had he asked his heart, I bet you he wouldn't have. This isn't even about a matter of character or flaw. This is about process, due process of checking your heart before you act. So simple. All right. And there's no judgment there. It's like the only judgment is a failure to act, not a failure of Mel Gibson's character. And Tiger Woods, I mean, every time I look at the guy, I like him. So it's like he just didn't ask his heart either. And so for you, the risings and the sun signs, um, ask your heart and you shall receive. Uh, ask your tax statement and you shall grieve. Okay? And I just made that up right now. Talk about creativity. All right. So moving on to the first week. It starts your birthday week around Christmas, as you know. And right after Christmas, there's breakdown. Now, a lot of Capricorns I know end up breaking down after Christmas because they've been strong all year anyways. And so this is like your, oh, your like total collapse if you didn't have it when the sun was in Sag, which was where you faced a lot of karma. But Capricorns usually are the ones that can stay on that mountain and stubborn it out even more the Tauruses. I'm a Taurus. Capricorn friends of mine, more stubborn, I think, or can dig in more. You know, I think I'm so wimpy. I'm just like, I give up, you know, for, screw it. So there's a breakdown and the moon was in Libra. So um, ultimately it could have been a real hard breakdown for you uh, with the moon in Libra because the moon in Libra is kind of wishy-washy and Capricorn wants to be strong. So right away, that's a setup, right? But even more intensely, uh, it has to do with uh, your, your belief structure and it has to do with um, uh, how you see yourself out there. So your emotions, uh, uh, your emotions were very much career-based and worried about where you might be or not be out there in the world. As it moves into Scorpio, it's even more so. But the breakdown is your ego at the end of the week. Even though your feelings are work and social, it's ego issues. That is, your ego is broken down or you failed to act or someone acted upon you because you failed to act, all these things. But in a long run, nutshell, the first week, go back and replay the first week before Christmas. Whatever was breaking down were control issues. You were trying to control someone, someone's trying to control you. And control issues all come from not being in control of your own heart. When your heart feels out of control, your life gets out of control. So writing down and discovering what the control issues is what this is really about for you. Now, in the second week, which is the New Year's Eve week, this is the powerful week. Sunday's a day of spirit because you're gonna ask your higher self, hey, what, what, what battles need to go? Because really, that's what you're doing, you're deciding your ego wants to win, wants to win that you're always skinny or wants to win that you're always pretty or wants to win that you're always on top. That's all ego. That's not the heart. The heart only wants to be happy. It doesn't really care if it's winning or not. That's the ego, right? So it's about letting go of the battles you don't want to have and the moon will cross over Cap, uh, Saturn so you'll be able to let go and release your attachments to certain things. Now according to the Capricorn chart, some of the attachment is you having power in the world. You, you are attached to a title, you are attached to power, you're emotionally attached to uh, people and being in the popular group or the non-popular group. And really you have to let go of that attachment because you should be great just being you. You're a goat, you stand alone on a mountain, so why are you attached to a certain reputation down on the bottom of the ground or whatever? So letting go of that and being more attached to your happiness and not attached to how is the first step and that starts to happen on Sunday and moves into Monday. Now, uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, which is New Year's Eve, basically the countdown to New Year's Eve, this is, um, how would I put this? This is gonna be kind of an intense one for you uh, because first of all, it's birthday, New Year's Eve, and the time leading up to it is like a change. So the days leading up, uh, Monday and then Tuesday, you are deciding what karma to get rid of. It's not just for you um, who you don't want to be anymore. It's what you don't want your life to be anymore. That's because the moon is in Sag and stirring the pot of karma. So as you are preparing for the new year, you're deciding, oh my God, I don't want to be in this situation. I don't want to be in this life. But also I have to say, yes, 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 you want your life to change. But it will only change if you change your dedication to what you act on and what you don't act on and what you check before you act on it. So all this is moot 
the parts of your life that you want to change if you don't know how you're going to actually in the moment pull that off with your own behavior. All right, so it's about acting different. So Tuesday night, it's New Year's Eve. You want to act on whatever your call is. So you want to be, go ahead and walk away from that old character and be the new Capricorn on New Year's Eve. It's because the universe is going to slap us on the back at 3.13 a.m. after New Year's, which is light cast day. So right after we make our New Year's resolutions, God starts manifesting them three hours later here in uh, the United States, or at least in, on the Pacific Coast. So we manifest on Wednesday. What are you manifesting? A new action policy where you don't react and don't act to these things and you want to be aware and mindful to act on these on those things. And so you're light casting that. Thursday you're getting a wave of results. Friday, your first wave or result of taking this action. So it may be that people get pissed, it may be that people act out, maybe everyone quits at your job. So you may not get the reaction you want Friday to Saturday, but you will see that a quantum revolution has begun. By acting out and, and moving forward in a different direction, you have turned everyone who bounces off of you into a new direction as well. And so that's quantum, high up and down, re-evolution of yourself from one simple action, which is to take action on what your heart wants and to stop actions on what your heart doesn't want. So simple. And that's week number two. Now week number three, it basically takes that energy and we run with it. So. Um, here you are trying to make new decisions with your ego. Now, by the way, you might be getting a new haircut. You might be getting new clothes. Anything that represents your ego, uh, new sign for when you do act. I mean, all these things do count, but recognize that um, on Sunday, uh, the moon goes into Pisces, and so you get very heady, and you have to keep your mind very um, self-merciful and self-compassionate on Sunday and Monday. You have to stay kind of fluid because you're trying to put down an ego that doesn't work. And the ego is designed by nature to not give up, to never stop. Uh, so as a result, you're telling to tell something that's not supposed to give up, to give up. And you are one of the strongest signs in the zodiac. You don't give up anyway. So all this adds to only one thing, self-mercy, self-compassion. It's okay, it's okay that it's so hard. It's okay that it's so hard for me. It's all okay. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, the moon's in Aries. And so you're looking at your strength and character as it relates to home and family, as it relates to emotional security. And now you have new decisions on Wednesday. These decisions are what you want to aim for when it comes to your new personality. So given all you understood, this is the personality I want to be. And you might say, I'm a nurse now, or I'm a, a golfer, or I am a, a new I am statement will be that new action, uh, uh, action statement. Then um, come Thursday, Friday, the moon moves into Taurus, and the Capricorns and Capricorn Risings are more full of love, more full of joy, more excited. The Capricorn Risings, by the way, are going to be a little bit ahead of the game again because they're not held up back by the Capricorns. And if you know any Capricorn Risings and you're a Capricorn, you might want to pay attention to them because Capricorns always wait to, to be perfect or know the total everything before they make a decision. And because they don't take as much risk, they usually don't get as much reward if they're not careful. So. Um, I think that uh, by uh, just exploring and observing yourself and observing another Capricorn with the Capricorn rising, you'll start to see how other Cappies do it. That's why I always kind of encourage that. But you're basically manifesting, taking new action based on your ego, and manifesting new on Friday. Now the moon is in Taurus, so it, what's new that you're manifesting? Your inner child, your personal dreams. When you take away your control issues to act or not act, and you allow yourself to decide by your heart, that's when dreams can come true. When it's not about being rich so I can buy what I want, it's about being happy now so I can be rich, right? It's different. So it's not putting off your happiness, it's not mortgaging your happiness in the future, it's finding your happiness right now. And you knew, K-N-E-W, that it was right here the whole time. You knew in your heart it was possible right now, but your mind was telling you something different. So it's the, what you knew versus your mind. To have the new, you've gotta to go to what you knew already. Yeah, that's what's interesting about it. And it's new because it's the first time you're letting it be true. So in this whole week, radical shift in priorities and objectives, I think as a result of you know, jumping in with this new personality, but then giving it a try, getting feedbacks from the world, and when you start to get feedback, again, some more uh, shifting of what the priorities are. Then, finally, the fourth week um, is really where things take off and fly. On Sunday, it becomes Master Shui, so you start to get really passionate about your personality. The moon moves into Gemini, and that makes you very hyper aware. So you know, you are really doing a lot of emotional shifting on Sunday and Monday. You might be very uncomfortable because the moon is in your sixth house, and so your body might take a hit. Be careful of health on Sunday and Monday. Monday in particular, you want to be very centered and slept if you can. 
And then as the moon moves into Cancer, it moves into its fullness. So you're kind of processing lifestyle, daily reality, and health. But again, you're working on ego and what's that mean to your ego? Then it moves into the big topic with a full moon, relationships and marriage. So on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, or Wednesday, excuse me, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the moon becomes full in Cancer and creates a tug of war between the sun focused on you in Capricorn and the moon focused on relationships in Cancer. And so you're going to find a tug of war between these two parts of yourself where uh, you're, on the one hand, you want to surrender to your relationships and make them happy. On the other, your ego wants to be in control. The truth is it's somewhere in between. There's going to be parts where your relationships are correct that you should maybe uh, relate differently. But there'll always be parts where it's like you need to either stand up and be more strong for yourself or maybe uh, less strong on others, which means more strong for yourself. It's the same thing. When you're hard on others, it's because you're not being hard on, it's because you're not being strong for yourself that you're hard on others. When you're critical of others, because you're being critical of yourself. It's kind of the way it works. Um, so on Thursday, the moon is the, at its fullest. And this, thank God, is ruled by Neptune. So we get God universe energy in. We get a full moon. It's a tug of war. What are you supposed to decide? Where your strength is, what you are, and what you're not. And relationships and marriage are the big distraction. Then on Friday, Friday is when uh, Soul Garden reopens its doors. And it's also when Venus goes direct. Venus is retrograde for this entire video. So for this entire video, you are finding your divine feminine and finding your ability to receive from yourself the whole time. And so part of this story is, how can I receive from, from myself? Because if you're going out conquering, you know, it's like, well, you, why are you hungry? You should be able to receive from yourself. You should be able to cook for yourself. So um, the Venus retrograde is, I want to receive from myself. How do I do it? But then when Venus goes direct on Friday, it's like, okay, let's do it. And boy, is it. So you're going to decide. It's a Saturn rule day. You're going to decide what you are and what you're not. And the moon in Leo is going to make you very private and vulnerable and to yourself. So recognize that. And then whatever you decide and commit to as far as what your ego wants or what your ego is, I'm a this, I'm a teacher, or I want that, you're going to go ahead and surrender and go. Act on it. Put it into motion. Get that spell working on Saturday with the moon still in Leo. So you're still going to be, uh, you know, um, rather private behind closed doors. You might also be in a lovemaking mood. So if you have a lover, you and your lover might spend the whole weekend in bed Friday and Saturday because there's a lot of great energy in your favor and it's your birthday. So for the last final week, you're going to discover, decide, commit, and go. And then there's a couple more days of wrap up here. Then on Sunday uh, the 19th and Monday the 20th, it is really manifest destiny. The moon will be in uh, Virgo, so you'll be really manifesting through beliefs that your beliefs will be changing, or that you feel like you've educated yourself, or you feel like you've got something new to know. So on Sunday, it's manifest destiny with Virgo. Uh, and Monday, you're going to be tested on that. So you're going to be tempted to go back or tempted to fall back. Don't allow that to happen. Uh, and then on Tuesday, boom, zero degrees. Your birthday period is over. And now you'll begin a 30-day work on soul capital, manifestation, and abundance. So that's good. So the last slide is to manifest and to hold space. Comprende? Cool. All right. So I have a new surprise for you. It's called a quantum mantra. And the quantum mantra is like a mantra you can say to yourself anytime this year. Because this mantra is designed for you this year, and it's specifically designed for New Year's Eve. And if you say it to yourself on the uh, like right before the end of New Year's, and you say it to yourself whenever you're in trouble, I believe this quantum mantra will force you to go quantum. So this year's quantum mantra for Capricorn is, oh my God, and it's a little bit small. You can't even see it. So I'm going to have to have you fill in the last word because I realize the font's too big but I'm not going to record a 20-minute horoscope again, so forget it. I don't care about being perfect. My heart is happy with this. I always decide with my heart. So my heart has decided that this is good enough. The Capricorns will get it. And that's how you can use self-mercy for yourself too. If your heart likes it, decide with it. If your heart doesn't like it, decide with it to be against it somewhere else. Okay? So I always decide with my heart. Sounds good. Well, I wish you a happy birthday, Captains. I want to let you know that I'm going to have the Aquarius Megascope out sooner than later. And I have a year-long Gigascope coming out just after New Year's. So I look forward to serving you all year. And before you buy my products, always ask. I always decide with my heart. So if your heart wants it, I'm just saying you should. All right, Captains, that's all I have for this time. I'll see you next time. Live, love, be.